All right, so now let's begin data automation, right? We have just covered data validation, wherein we set some validation rules that prevents or stops the user from creating data if there's some kind of a uh, interruption or disruption in the business logic or a use case, right? But now if everything goes fair and is straightforward and uh, data is supposed to be inserted into the system, we could also have some background jobs, right? We could have some automation that uh, needs to be done, right? So those kind of automation can be tackled or implemented through two different tools in Salesforce which come out of the box. So those two tools are workflow, workflow rules and process builders. So we'll be looking at these two tools and these two tools are the most important tools that an admin should know. So this section is pretty much everything. Uh, it's, it's basically this section that uh, we will define or derive you as a Salesforce rockstar, right? So if, if you are an admin and if you want to you know excel at being an administrator and also switching to a developer job sometime in the future, these two tools should be should be rock solid in terms of you know your, your understanding of them and uh, how you can implement them, right? So most of the declarative stuff like configuring page layouts, record types, list views, uh, sharing uh, public groups and roles, and uh, you know the basic configuration, creating objects, users profiles is, is all admin part. But if you have these two tools in your hand, uh, no one can stop you from you know being a great admin. All right. So we'll be looking at these two tools now. The first one is workflow rules. So I'll, as usual, um, go to the quick find box and type workflow. So here we have an option that's called workflow rules, right? So before diving into it let me just create a use case so that we are actually you know using a live example to understand how things work so let's go to our covid tracker application and here if we see we have the covid count report a covid count object right now let's open any of the records and here if you see we have active cases deceased cases and recovered cases right and then we have a day category field so what if i told you that the users need not enter this information whether it be red orange or green we kind of derive it or you know automated so whenever the active cases are less than 5000 the day category should automatically be populated as green okay what if if it is you know somewhere between 5000 and 10000 that's when it should be populated as orange and if it is something more than 10000 it should be automatically populated as red so that's our use case right we don't want user to user to insert a value but through some some kind of a business logic or some kind of use case we want to derive the value with some other parameters and automatically populate this once the record is saved right so the user does not have to enter this value cool are we good with the use case all right now let's go to setup and now let's go to our workflow rules right so workflow rules i'll just click on don't show this again this is just an introduction and i'll click on continue so you can create a workflow rule for a specific object. So if I click on the new rule button here, you'll see that it will ask the first thing that is the object name. So what object are we concerned uh, with? It is the COVID count object, right? So I'll select the COVID count object here, this right here and click on next. All right. So now the important things here are you need to define a rule name as always. Salesforce needs a name for almost everything. Then you have something called the evaluation criteria. Then you have the rule criteria. OK, so let's give it a name first of all. So I want to say. Right. So populate day category to red is the rule name and I'm saying populate day category to red if active cases are more than 10k. All right. So now the next thing that we want to set is the evaluation criteria. Now, what does this mean? It says evaluate the criteria when a record is either created or it is created and every time it's edited, you cannot have time dependent workflow actions here. That's OK. Or created and any times it's edited to subsequently meet criteria. OK. So what is the first option? It means every time you create a COVID count record, this workflow rule should internally fire. So far, so good. The second option is created and every time it's edited. That means if you create a record, it should fire then. And if you go ahead and, you know, modify or make some changes on your record and on an existing record and try to save it, that's an update, right? So every time you update it in those situations, also it should fire. OK, and the third option is created and anytime it's edited to subsequently meet criteria. Now, this subsequently keyword is the main keyword here. So this means like what is the difference between the second one and the third one? The third one is just different in the in a sense when you go ahead and modify your record and try to save it. If the value that it is looking for is still the same, it won't actually evaluate it. Right. Only it will only evaluate it if it subsequently meets the criteria. Now, what is that criteria? It's talking about this criteria down here. Okay, so if it meets the criteria, 
only then this evaluation uh, rule will be fired or else it won't be fired all right so let's now define our rule, rule criteria so out of these three options i would go for the second option for now because i want to evaluate this day category to a specific value every time a record is either created or edited right because when you create a record you can enter the active cases and what you could also do is you could also modify the record and change the active cases number here so in both the cases i want my day category to be automatically updated and should be should reflect the correct value right so what should be my rule criteria my rule criteria should be covid count active cases greater than and since this is a number i can just simply type 10000 right so this is pretty much in english the active cases should be greater than 10000 this is the criteria if met this workflow rule will be fired once we have this sorted we can click on save and next and here you get to define a workflow action so now what do you want to do once you have the workflow rule criteria sorted what do you want to actually do with it what if this actually happens what if the scenario is satisfied or it it, uh, it is uh, evaluated to true so in that case what you want to do is you want to update a field right you want to update some other field what is that field it is the day category field so here if you see under workflow actions you get an option to field update so if i click on the new field update you'll get to populate the day category field to a specific value and that specific value will be red right apart from this this is just the name field that we need to populate i'll just give it a common name and we can click on save right so you have added a field update so if you see under a workflow rule these are the things that you can do you can create a new email alert which means you can send out emails to people you can update some fields so here if you see we are able to update the day category field right so you can update the day category field or you can also send an outbound message now this outbound message is nothing but you know communicating with a third party system some external system so that's when this is used so these are the three four things that we, you can do for now we have just updated the field and we can click on done and once your workflow rule is ready, it is not automatically activated. You need to click on activate to uh, see the changes. So once I click on activate, this active checkbox will be true. Right. And if you don't need it in the future, you can click on deactivate again and you can just deactivate it. All right. Now, if you see what is this workflow rule saying, it's saying it will populate the day category to red. When will it do it? What is the rule criteria? Whenever active cases are greater than 10,000. All right. What object is it evaluating things on? It is evaluating on covid count and what is the criteria of evaluation every time a record is created or it is edited if all of this makes sense what it what should it do it should update a field and that field is the day category field it should update it to red okay now let's see this workflow rule in action now if i just go ahead to covid counts discard changes and let me just refresh this page and let's create a new record I'll just choose the delta variant one for now and I, let's type in the primary contact and then the active cases so it should be more than 10,000 right so let me just put in 12,000 and try to save this record I'm not selecting any day category here if you see let's click on save so this record is created and you see the day category is automatically read right now the next thing is what if I change this to 2000 is this greater than 10,000 no right and if I try to click on save, this still stays red, but it should be green because it is less than 5000, right? But that's still not happening because we have not written the rule for it yet. We have just created the rule for the first one. So now we'll create the rule for the other two scenarios. The one is less than 5000 and the second one is between 5000 and 10,000. Let's go ahead and clone this current workflow rule. And once you clone things, you get all the uh, things that you have done on the previous workflow rule here so that you can make minor changes if that's what you want If you want to create something entirely from scratch just like we did this one you can do that as well So I'll just rename things to uh, orange populate day category to Orange if active cases are more than 5k and less than 10k Right and I'll keep the criteria created and every time it's edited now here What should be the criteria the criteria should be it is greater than 5000 and the active cases is less than 10,000 correct now since we have gone for greater than on the first case this should be less than equal to 
right so that the boundary value 10000 is also considered right so this is the second condition now when you have a when you have multiple criteria conditions you see this default you have the and condition what if you want to evaluate either or conditions either it should be this or it should be this in that case you can go ahead and click on the add filter logic and you can modify this filter remember the last time when we modified filter logics that was for list views similarly you can modify your filters here you can just say one or two you can say one and two and three and all of that okay so once you're good with the filter logic let's click on save and next and now what we need to do we need to update a field just like last time and what do we need to update we need to update our day category field and this time should the value should be orange make sense i'll just name this populate day category to orange and click on save and let me create one more i'll just click on save and new so here i'll just say populate day category to green the third one oh shoot this will create a new field update but we need to create a new workflow rule entirely right so we'll just create one field update and just click on done and just activate it now let's clone this one and create a third workflow rule now this should be green if the cases are less than or equal to 5000 right so less than 5k and here the same criteria and then I can just remove this particular filter I'll just have to empty it out and I can just go ahead and say active cases are less than or equal to 5000 right so this is my third one and here the filter logic will give me an error because it's saying one and two if I try to save and next let's see what happens so see it says review all the error the filter logic references an undefined filter now since there's only one filter here you cannot say one and two here so you just have to remove this click on save and next all right and here what do we need to do S just like last time field update we want to update the day category field again and here we want to specify the value as green okay let's give it a name and click on save so we have created three workflow rules now let me click on done and let's click on activate and let's go to the workflow workflow rule section again so now if you see all of a sudden we have three workflow rules in the system and all are for the COVID count object for these three scenarios right would you be able to create all of this in a single workflow rule no right because the entry criteria or the evaluation criteria is different for everyone because these numbers are different for each scenario right so you have to have different workflow rules for different uh, uh, use cases so we have created three for this single object so a single object can have multiple workflow rules all right so now that we have this in place and everything is activated now let's go back and try to do things let's see what happens so you see once i save it as 2000 it changes to green what if i change it to 7000 what should it populate to orange right let's see that in action orange and what about 12000 it should be red so it's working entirely right all the three values are automatically getting populated now the user does not need to you know enter this value day category themselves it will be automated for them right so that's a good uh, automation that we did so automation comes in handy when you have to populate fields or you know you have to do some kind of background jobs that the user does not need to know about or they don't have to do it manually or themselves okay now one more thing here if you see let's go to one of these rule criteria and if i just click on edit here now let me tell you the difference between these two so what we chose was created and every time it's edited right so now if i go ahead and modify this 12000 to 14000 what do you think will happen so it will still be red the day category will still be red because the criteria is matching right but the second one that we have selected here it will internally still evaluate the evaluate the workflow rule because the condition is matching so it will evaluate the workflow rule and internally it will again update the same value to red so what's happening the day category is red and it is again updating it to red but that does not make sense right because you you, you can skip that that does just takes up you know resources and sales forces uh, time that consumes some time so instead we can use the third condition so it, it will only evaluate it if the condition changes so let's say you had something called 12,000 and the day category is red your evaluation will only execute if you change something that that is supposed to change the day category so if you mark it as 14,000 the workflow rule won't fire because it is not subsequently meeting criteria it's still in the same in, in the same criteria right so this time the uh, workflow rule won't fire but if you change this something like from 14,000 to 9,000 in this case your workflow will fire 
that that's basically the difference between the second and the third one so this evaluates every time irrespective of the criteria this only evaluates based when the criteria is actually changing and an, and an update is necessary all right so this is a better one to use because it, it optimizes performance but if you have a scenario wherein you need to update every time go with the second option all right so this was about workflow rules do you want to see one more use case on workflow rules let's look at one more use case so now so we have put up a validation here right entry date if i just type in 28 that's a future date and if i click on save this says that the entry date should always be today's date so if the entry date should always be today's date why let the user enter it, enter it at all we can automate this as well so let's go ahead and create a new workflow rule for this so what's the use case every time a record is created the entry date should be updated to today's date right so let's click on new rule let's go to covid count and let's click on next what's my rule name entry date should always be current date or today's date right now what should be your rule criteria you want to do it every time a record is created right let's assume that we don't let the user modify the entry date because we are automating it so in that case you don't have to worry about the updates because they won't be changing the entry date right they will be changing other fields but the created date should all it should always be the day when it was created right so then you should just select the first rule criteria that says it should be created and what is your criteria here do you need any specific criteria here no right because every time a record is created you want to set the entry date to be the current date or today's date right do you see any criteria like we had uh, earlier that that active cases should be this or this particular field should be this nothing like that right so in these cases what you can do is you can just change from criteria are met to formula evaluate so true this opens up the same box that we use for creating formulas and you can simply type in true here this will say that it, it, it will be evaluated to true always that means Evaluate the rule when a record is created and what is the rule criteria? It's always true, which means it will be uh, it will be firing every time. Okay, so let, let's click on save and next and now let's use a field update. Now this time what is the field that we want to update? We want to update the entry date, right? Now if you see when I select entry date, earlier when I selected day category, the new options came up with the pick list option. So based on the data type, you get to choose the exact value so here now when you change to entry date it's asking whether you want a blank value or you want a formula to set a value once you click on formula you can click on the show formula editor it opens up the same formula and from here we can pick up the today today function right that gives you the current date this function right here i just insert it i'll give it a name i'll say it entry date should be today's date and i'll click on save let's see what happens so this field update got saved i'll click on done and I'll click on activate right so this is my fourth workflow rule that I've created under the COVID count object so three are on the day category and one is on the entry date now let's go back and let's not give any information here and let's try to save it nothing happened let me refresh it okay that was an update that's why nothing happened because you are updating an existing record right let's go to COVID counts and create a fresh record so now if I create a fresh record, let's click on next. Let me give it a PCP. And here if I give active cases as 6000, what should be the day category? It should come up as orange. I won't be filling the entry date. Let's click on save. So you see, once I click on save, your day category is orange and your entry date is set to today's date, right? So both the fields are getting automated, which means all your workflow rules are firing properly, right? What if you change this to 9000, click on save. So it's it's still up it, okay it's still orange because uh, the number the criteria did not change let me save it to 12,000 it is red now so all your workflow rules are firing properly and they're working fine right so this is how you can automate stuff so what we have looked at in workflow rules is how to do field updates right but you can also send out emails so, so we have another automation tool that's called process builders and process builders are far more powerful than workflow rules right so I'll simply type process builder here on the quick find box the magical box that returns almost everything that we search for and let's go to process automation under process automation let's go to process builders